So there are several business strategies that you can learn just watching the local traders and business people around you. Wow. I'm going to bring you about seven of them that I've noticed in my locality. You can add more in the comment section. Meanwhile, today is your first time to see my face. Welcome. This is a place where we empower Africans and of course every other person with the right tools and opportunities to create wealth. One of the businesses that are so, so prominent in my country and around me are the people who sell vegetables around me. Now, you go to buy typically water leaf, right? They will tell you, oh, each of the bunches, because they keep them in mounds or bunches, what they call it. They will tell each of the bunches is 50 naira, but if you want 100 naira, they will give you three parts. You get what I mean? You get what I mean? So imagine if you apply that to your business, whether your business is an online business, a digital product, whatever. Can you give people more value when they agree to pay more? That's the idea. That's a huge business lesson you should think about. And let me tell you, the best way to do this thing, you don't want to tell me that they, you know, I mean, they measured the sizes of the 50 naira mounts. They just simply know the, the amount they can, they can sell 100 naira, then divided it into three. So that means if you actually buy 50 naira, you are actually cheating yourself. So that's a clue for you. Do something that people will feel, oh wow, I got much more value than I thought I would get. That's number one. That's number one lesson from a water leaf seller in an open market. When you go to buy suya, suya by the way is meat barbecue. I mean, it can be done with ram, beef, goat or whatever, but usually beef, ram in Nigeria is very tasty and spicy. And the, as you approach the person selling, usually, usually, he will cut a part, a, a, a piece of it, spice it and give you to taste. I mean, he doesn't even care whether you're eventually going to buy or not, but he gives you value in advance. And there's no way, trust me, that you're going to eat that suya or barbecue meat that you're not going to say, oh, okay, cut me some part of XYZ amount. Can people get upfront value from your business? that will help them make a buying decision fast. Think about it, think in line of your business, okay? I know you are not selling suya, you may not be selling meat or anything in that. You might even be offering a service. Is there something you can do to get people to taste what your service is like? The aura of your business, the aura of the problem you can solve with your business that will make them say, oh, I'm gonna go with that. Even if you are offering cleaning services, can you offer free cleaning or free car washing or something in advance that will make them say, oh my God, I love the detergent you use. I love the smell of my car after you clean. Can you also clean my house? You get the drift? Do you get the drift? You know, people who do training understand this a bit. Do you have a free training that will make people to then cash into your, you know, pay training? You know what I mean, okay? So that's number two lesson from the Suya man. And I don't know why women don't do that business, but anyway, so you're mad. <laughs> Number three lesson. This lesson is from the is from the peer seller. Okay, so it, usually when it's the season of corn, corn is one of my favorite, favorite foods. Like roasted, cooked, anyhow you do corn, I love it. Okay, maybe not really roasted. Oh, but I, I still love it roasted, I think. Anyway, so usually when you, whenever you go to buy corn, you're going to find people who sell pear. That's if the person who is, even the person selling corn might be still be selling pear, but usually we sell it in retail. Maybe tell you three of them for, for 100 naira or so. But if, as you're approaching a person who is um, selling corn in certain areas in Nigeria, people who sell raw pear in basins will rush to you and say, oh, madam, you can also buy pear. And they are not selling retail as in, you know, in ones and twos and threes. They are selling like in bulk. You can have like 16 pears in a in a in a in a, in a basin, you know, in a bowl, and they say, "Oh, it's, it's one thousand naira." Something in you will say, oh, "Why not buy more corn and buy this pear and take it home?" They are offering you bulk buy, bulk buying, you know. And I learned this from um, from a Nigerian business coach, or she doesn't call herself a coach, but she's such a business savvy person. Jama Ifanyeze. When she mentioned it, I was like, "Oh yeah." This, this makes sense. So look at your business. What is it that you can offer as complementary in bulk? So somebody is coming to buy a single thing, you can show them something complementary and that goes in bulk. You can sell even much more. 
or maybe you are not even selling the main business you are the person selling box so you have it means that it um, you have to go to near the person selling something complementary to what it is that you're selling so there's a big you know salon in town all the students or everybody goes there even though they might have their own you know uh, wig attachment you know hair attachment and all of that extensions you can open your big um, hair extension shop just beside the salon and offer even more services so people will just come buy their hair extensions in varieties that they want and then walk into the salon to make their hair and that's just an example so look at it how do you position your business beside another business that will give you a an easy flow of customers that's the business lesson from the peer seller who sells in bulk mm -hmm. all right number four I heard about this man who sells cane. Of course, there are people who import it. I mean, he imports it into the country. Now, in my country, we import a lot of things, right? So, we import it into the country. Cane. What I mean, cane. The bulala you used to cane children to correct them and all. I mean, cane anybody. I mean, you know, I mean, soldiers also cane people. But cane, right? And cane is also used to make um, yeah, furniture and the rest. But I mean, the one for children that you typically see primary school or secondary school um, teachers holding in Nigeria, at least in my country, okay? It's the same thing in your country, right? <laughs> the man imports canes in large quantity, of course, and stores them in his warehouse. People come all the way. People who sell in market, school owners, people come to buy from him in bulk. Now, some of you are, you are almost squeezing life out of your business because you're thinking that by selling different things that's how you make money specialize in fact there's a research that a woman who sells cow hair pepper soup somewhere in lagos island makes much more money than a fast food joint in upscale lekki in lagos in nigeria that's the truth a woman who sells just amala and a wedu only that's her staple she has such a flow of customers that she sells that in in, in a short time and she's gone and she has done that business for 18 years she hasn't said let me add rice to it let me add beans to it let me also give those who are asking me for for coke and fanta mm -mm. just that business niche when people think of that line of business when they think of k they think of that man's warehouse when they think of amalana oh that woman who sits at this place Think about it. Do you really need all the other services that you're doing? Or do you want to become a master of one? So this is a business lesson from the cane seller. Next one is the one that is so, you know, I grew up experiencing this one and doing this one and knowing it. It's called the business lesson from the Igbo trader. Now you enter any market in Nigeria, you know, even outside the country, Igbos are just typical for this. So you're passing and you're scanning through to see whether you find maybe a fabric you're looking for. And they'll tell you, oh, they'll call you all sorts of sweet names. They'll, they'll welcome you to their shop. They won't stop that. They won't just welcome you to your shop and start showing you varieties. No, they will give you a seat to sit down. The way they will persuade you to sit down, oh my God. You'll be like, what if you don't have what I want? Let me check. They say, no, 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 just sit down. There's nothing that you want that we don't have. And that doesn't mean they have everything in their shop. They, as you sit down, they can take their time and comb the whole market and bring it for you. They will not just stop there. They will offer you water, sometimes malt, for you to drink. And they are usually um, air conditioner in their shops. And I'm telling you, when you can make your customer comfortable, make them sit down, the probability is that they will not just buy that thing that they're looking for. They are probably going to see every other thing in the shop because they have a good view right now and they're going to buy more. So even sometimes, the person may not see exactly they may not have exactly what the person wants, maybe because it's no longer in the market, for instance. The person will end up buying related things and spend even much more money than what she came to buy or what he came to buy. This is, this is still happening as we speak. I mean, I don't know how they learned that, but fabric sellers who are Igbo men, A1, they have, and even if you end up not buying, not a big deal. They're not going to abuse you. They're not going to say anything derogatory. You're still going to have enjoyed your AC, sat down, drank their malt and said goodbye. They will, they will be willing to offer you their card as well and tell you about you know their shop so that you don't miss it the next time i love it all the time so that's business lesson from the Igbo trader from the Igbo fabric seller especially in nigeria now next 
lesson. This next lesson is the lesson from the person who who grinds in the market, the market grinder. So, so many times people have blenders in their homes, but somehow people get attached to that blending that is done after buying the tomatoes and the pepper and everything and blend it in the market. They feel it's more, it's smoother and all of that. Okay. And then you will always find the people who also blend just by where you're buying the tomato. That's an issue you feel instead of going home to waste some time trying to wash it and prep it and, and blend it. Why not just give this person to blend it? right so they are always positioned beside the people selling the uh, tomatoes and pepper and tatashe and all of that now they don't just stay beside those people they have clean water that they will use to wash this they will prep it if, if, if onions is involved they will peel everything wash it properly get it ready for blending and in quick succession they don't waste time they also have enough polythene bags doubled and doubled to make sure that when after blending the puree is tied in a way that it will not have it won't have to pour or tear so they invest money buying those packages and water and you know cleaning their machines being close by where the people who they have to blend for are coming to shop business lesson from a market tomato grinder what are you thinking how can you position your business and let it have some collateral value for people to say mm, even though i have this i can do it for myself let me just allow them do it for me that's the business lesson that you need to employ next one this one is so 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 typical business lesson from a local barber from a barber <laughs> my husband has a place he goes to barb his hair we drive kilometers away from the house Oh my god there are barbers everywhere in fact there's a barber two three minutes walk from the house everywhere there are barbers everywhere but we always have to go there let me tell you on my own as a person who usually escorts i get to watch tv series watch football or music videos while i'm waiting i'm comfortable because there's air conditioner there there are smart workers you don't see people sagging their jeans you know showing off their tattoo bodies all of those things in that in, in, in that barber salon you don't have that you don't have people dressing in a weird way all the staff who are the barbers dress properly in, in their corporate uh, barber outfits and they are always so smart now they don't just barb your hair and let you go they prep your hair they you know they use the uh, what do you call that now they use a warm towel to clean your body, massage your hair, to clean your hair rather than not your body, to massage your hair and all of those ointment and things, prep you properly. With the covering they even use is customized their needs and you don't see hair flying around the place. Immediately somebody is done, another person sweeps it out, they have people who are, I mean, it's just seamless like that. So even if you're taking your child, you know, along, you're not really bothered about all that, all that is sorted. So that's why we go all the way, all the way. So that's a lesson you should think about that I learned from my local barber. So what is it that you can offer more than the extraordinary that will make people to spend and go all the way to pay you even more to use your service? Mm -hmm. Which? All right, so um, if any of these things make sense to you, which of them are you thinking of applying? Which one directly can you, you know, reconfigure to match your business? Let me know in the comment section and until I come your way again, keep moving with the strategies, implement them, and by all means, go make more money. Bye.